Hello everyone, welcome to Eco Talks with Sneha Munerikar. In today's video, we will discuss about the ordinal approach of theory of consumer behavior. In previous video, we have seen the cardinal approach. Now we will see the ordinal approach. In ordinal approach, main theory is indifference curve analysis. So in a cardinal approach, there were some drawbacks. That is, first, they, first drawback was they said that utility is measured. But in reality, utility cannot be measured in the quantitative terms. Precise utility cannot be measured in precisely in quantitative terms. So, in order to overcome this difficulty, the economics has evolved an alternative approach based on the indifference curves. That is, that approach is known as ordinal approach, where they said utility is not measurable. They said utility is not measurable, but consumer can rank his preference. So according to in the, uh, indifference curve analysis, the utility cannot be measured precisely, but the consumer can state which of the two combination of goods he prefer without describing the magnitude of strength of his preference. Example, there are two combination of goods, A and B. So consumer can say which combination he would prefer, A, or B, which is his first preference. Either if A is his first preference and B combination is second preference, he need not tell the magnitude why he choose A over B. Just he, it is his decision that he has choose combination A over combination B. So with, here he did not describe the magnitude of strength of his preference. So this means that if consumer is presented with number of various combination of goods, he can order or rank them in scale of preference. That is first preference, second preference. That is, if, for example, he has various combinations marked as A, B, C, D, E, etc. Then consumer can tell whether he prefers A to B or B to A or is indifference between them. For a, we can represent symbolically whether he prefers A over B or B over A or whether A preference A combination is equal to combination B for him. So likewise, similarly, he can indicate his preference or indifference between any other pairs of combination. So suppose his first preference is combination B among A, B, C, D, E, five combinations. First preference is B. Third, second is E. Then he chooses C. Then next he chose D and his last preference was A. So here he has given his preference among the available combinations. So similarly, he can indicate preference. We have seen the preference. The concept of ordinal utility implies that consumer cannot go beyond stating his preference or indifference. That is, if a consumer prefers A to B, he cannot tell how much he prefers. Just it is he prefers A to B. It is no quantification is not needed here. The consumer cannot state the quantitative difference between the various level of satisfaction. He simply compare it by qualitatively. That is, he can merely judge whether one level of satisfaction is higher, uh, higher than or lower than or equal to another. Just he will give his preference. That is the basic of ordinal utility analysis. The base two main economists who have given contribution in this analysis is Hicks and Allen. So the basic tool of Hicks and Allen ordinal analysis of demand is the indifference curve that represent all those combination of goods that give same level of satisfaction to the consumer. So suppose this is the indifference curve. I see one. So in all the combinations of goods X and Y, here it is X. Uh, good X here, good Y. So all the combination lying on in this indifference curve gives same level of satisfaction to the consumer. So it represents all those combination of goods that give same level of satisfaction to the consumer. In other words, all combination of goods lying on the consumer's indifference curve are equally preferred by him. That is all. Suppose this is combination A, B, C, D. So here all these are equal. A 
combination a combination b combination c these all are equal to each other that is they are equally preferred indifference curve is also called as iso utility curve because here utility or satisfaction derived from these four combination is same so it is called as iso utility curve the indifference schedule indifference schedule is the tabular statement that shows the different combination of two commodities yielding the same level of satisfaction so suppose this uh, this curve we ic1 we have indifference curve one so all these combinations so combination will be one unit of x 12 units of y or we can say rice at x and wheat is y a uh, second combination will be two units of rice eight units of wheat three units of rice five units of wheat so likewise we have the combination so this combination will give equal level of satisfaction the consumer is asked to tell how much wheat that is how much units of y he will be willing to give up to gain an additional unit of x so here you can see he has gained the additional unit of x plus 1 we first he was consuming one unit now he has opted for second to consume this second unit of rice how much unit of wheat he can give up so here he has given up four units of wheat to remain on the same level of satisfaction if the gain of one unit of rice compensates him fully for the loss of four units of wheat then the next combination that is two units of rice and eight units of wheat will give him same satisfaction as the first combination so he, he, these are the different indifference curve now a set of indifference curve representing the scale of preference at the different levels of satisfaction is known as indifference curve map so various indifference curve on a single graph representing different level of satisfaction it is called as indifference curve map so all the combinations now lying on ic3 this is the ic3 that is indifference curve 3 is pro provide is the same level of satisfaction and it is compared it is higher compared to ic2 and ic1 satisfaction level is higher in ic3 because farther we move from the origin greater will be the satisfaction so ic3 levels of satisfaction is more than ic2 ic2 is more than ic1 so all the combination lying on indifference curve 3 that is ic3 provides same level of satisfaction but level of satisfaction on indifference curve 3 will be greater than the level of satisfaction on indifference curve 2 then properties of indifference curve first property is that it is the downward sloping we have seen it previously it is a downward sloping curve from left to right so indifference curve it is the downward sloping curve from left to right this means when qu the quantity of one good in the combination is increased the quantity of another good has to necessarily reduced so that they can remain on the same level of satisfaction so you can see if we now here x it is increasing quantity of x is increasing, quantity of y is decreasing so that they remain on the same level of satisfaction second property is indifference curve has negative slope which denotes that if quantity of one commodity decreases, the quantity of other must increase if the consumer is to stay on the same level of satisfaction. That is, slope here is negative. Slope of indifference curve is negative. Then the farther the away from the origin the indifference curve lies, the higher will be the level of utility it denotes. That is, bundle of goods on higher indifference curve are preferred by the rational consumer how much far we move from the origin that much higher level of satisfaction is indicated then fourth property is indifference curve do not intersect indifference curve never intersects each other this condition won't happen because each indifference curve represents a different level of satisfaction if two in, uh, curves are intersecting each other that means they are indicating one level of satisfaction that which is impossible so they do not intersect and fifth property is they are convex to the origin they are convex to the origin the next one more concept they have used here is budget line or price line to determine the equilibrium level of consumer according to ordinal things so budget line it is the price line that shows 
all combination of goods with which the consumer can buy by spending his given income on the two goods at their prices so price line it will show the combination of goods that consumer can purchase through his income y or and the prices of two commodities are given px and py so what is the quantity money he spends quantity of two goods that is x and we can say small x and y this is the quantity of x and y that can be purchased with the respective price from the given income that is represented by the price line or budget line now suppose consumer has 50 rupees to spend on two commodities x and y let the price of x be 10 rupees and y be 5 rupees so how he can spend his 50 rupees suppose he spends all his income on x now price of x is you can say price of x is equal to 10 rupees so he has 50 rupees so he can maximum he can buy 5 units of x so here this will be the 5 units and for y it is 5 rupees per unit so price of y is 5 so maximum he can purchase 10 units of y this point indicates 10 units of y so when you join these two points it gives the combination of commodities x and y that can be purchased through income 50 rupees at the price price of x is 10 rupees price of y is 5 rupees and slope of this line is indicated by price of x divided by price of y so this is the slope of budget line and this is the limitation criteria this is the criteria which is used to find the equilibrium level of consumer so some having properties and indifference curve first we have the marginal rate of substitution the negative slope of indifference curve at any one point is called as marginal rate of substitution so negative slope at any point on the indifference curve it is called as marginal rate of substitution of two commodities x and y and it is given by slope of tangent at that point suppose at this point we want to find out the uh, marginal rate of substitution it can be done by drawing a tangent here and then finding out the slope that is delta y by delta x therefore slope of indifference curve is negative because it is downward sloping dy by dx that is nothing but marginal rate of substitution between x and y so definition of marginal rate of substitution of x for y it is defined as number of units of commodity y that must be given up in exchange of extra unit of commodity x so in order to increase the commodity x how much y we will sacrifice that will give the marginal rate of substitution for of x for y so that the consumer remain on the same level of satisfaction marginal rate of substitution or the slope of indifference curve is equal to ratio of marginal utilities of commodities involved in the function so mrx xy that is x for y that is marginal utility of x divided by marginal utility of y or when we are substituting y for x then it will be marginal utility of y divided by marginal utility of x this is one of the important point in indifference curve analysis the so next we will see the consumer's equilibrium when is consumer said to be in an equilibrium when he maximizes his utility in a given income and market price so given the indifference map and the budget line consumer's equilibrium is defined as point of tangency of budget line with the highest possible indifference curve so you can see here there are indifference curve map we have three indifference curve 1 2 and 3 so and this is our budget line ab so this budget line is tangent to second curve at the point e so this is the point of equilibrium where consumer consumes x star quantity of x and y star quantity of y and he gains the highest satisfaction at the point of tangency slope of budget line will be equal to the slope of indifference curve that is slope of budget line is nothing but marginal rate of substitution which is equal to marginal utility of x divided by marginal utility of y and slope of budget line we have seen it it is price of x divided by price of y so this is the equilibrium condition according to 
ऑर्डिनल यूटिलिटी थ्योरी नेक्स्ट व्हाई दिस इनडिफरेंस का एनालिसिस इज सुपीरियर ओवर द कार्डिनल अप्रोच और मार्जिनल यूटिलिटी एनालिसिस तो इनडिफरेंस को दे हैव rejected that it is utility is measurable whereas in realistic it is not measurable so they have ignored this fact and they have said that it, the consumer he gives his preference so they have dropped the idea of measuring of utility second indifference curve analysis uses the concept of marginal rate of substitution that is measurable moreover indifference curve analysis demand can be analyzed without assuming the constant marginal utility of money here two assumptions are dropped in the case of indifference curve one is utility is measurable this uh, assumption is dropped and constant marginal utility of money even this assumption is dropped in this indifference curve analysis so these are this is the superiority of indifference curve over the marginal utility analysis next is the criticism of indifference curve analysis even there are some drawbacks or some points which are lacking in this theory first is they have uh, analysis has unrealistic assumption that consumer possess complete knowledge of innumerable possible combinations so they have assumed that consumer has full knowledge of all the possible combination of goods and the scale of preference but in actual So the consumer will not have the complete knowledge second the consumer has to know and compare the desirability of combination such as eight pair of shoes and one shirt 10 kg of sugar and one kg of rice so he has to compare the between the two combine quantity of two goods sometimes it becomes unrealistic or it becomes difficult so this is one of the criticism and third drawback is they have assumed the shape shape of indifference curve there is convex they have assumed the shape they didn't give the hicks and allen they have not given the clear cut proof for the indifference curve the shape of indifference curve that's all for today's session if you have any doubts you can ask me in the comment section and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you